Okay, so Logic 10.7 just came out. I waited an entire week to, to talk about why, because number one, there's going to be a lot of misinformation. And so I just want that purge to happen kind of behind the scenes. And so, you know, please be careful because th this is not a small transition. So if you guys really want to learn it, there's only two or three resources in my estimation that that really understand what's happening here. Obviously, my mentor, Edgar Rothermich, there's a great logic mind and Eli Kranzberg, who I've done some work for. And uh, I think Logic Pro Life is pretty solid. I don't know if you guys know him on YouTube. And then there's, I forget the guy with the mustache on YouTube, but that gentleman is on point, I think, as well. So, well, why Logic Pro rules? So, other than that, I would, I would really question your, your, your resource. So, today I'm going to present you some information that I'll be creating for a, a more extensive course. Uh, my angle isn't to be like some authority. I'm like a student like you guys. And I'm figuring out the easiest and the most digestible way of learning this really, really big subject. Okay. So anyway, with that context in mind, let's get into Dolby Atmos. What is it? What is it not? Uh, how do we use it? H how do I implement the technology? But if you really want to learn the ins and outs, everything that I learned is from Edgar Rothermich, as you guys know. I just finished uh, editing the book. And so how deep do you want to go down the rabbit hole? Right? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you a nice introduction, you know, put a bow tie on it. But if you want the finer details, you're going to have to go to the grandmasters, okay? I, I'm not claiming to be a grandmaster. I just, I'm the best at what I do. So let me, let me kind of set this up. And then maybe after we'll talk about some of the like fun features of, of Logic, okay? So this is the beginning of mass adoption in the world of immersive audio. It may not feel like it, it may not seem like it, but I'm telling you right now, this is going to happen. They've made it insanely easy for common laymen to pick up a $200 software. Maybe the laptop was a little bit more, but the technology is so good right now. What, what used to cost, you know, four, five, six, seven thousand dollars $7,000 can now be purchased for $2,000, $3,000. Apple is getting better. The, the hardware is getting better. And so, now we, we move into the world of immersive audio. There's a lot of interchangeable terms, but essentially I, what I need you to understand is that this was, this was developed for film initially, and it took some time to adopt for music, various reasons why, but we don't need to purchase a separate app or anything like that for, for just you know, straight ahead, introductory use, the, the Dolby Atmos render app, which I believe is $399, and if you have like an education academic discount, you get it for $99. You don't even need to purchase it. Now, if you go deeper into this world and maybe you're like mixing for video games or, or film or something, then yeah, you're going to need it because there's, there's a lot more features. But generally speaking, it's, it, it, it works really well. And so I'm excited to tell you some of the mostly what not to do because, you know, you could look anywhere. Everyone's going to tell you how to set it up and yada, yada. But there's a lot of really, really big mistakes that you can make. So let's talk about why now. How come, you know, after 10 years of Dolby Atmos kind of presenting this, how come we're, we're, we're getting this now? We're getting it now because a couple of very particular things have happened with technology. Again, it's affordability. But let's go from the beginning. Let's, under, let's go through a quick history lesson, okay? So mono has been around since like the late 1800s, okay? So we were playing like through gramophones, right? And then stereo came out sometime in the 1930s, 1940s. And we were able to really expand uh, sound sources and sound stages, okay? And then sometime in the 2000s, we started experimenting with surround. Uh, but that doesn't necessarily mean that you are in an immersive space. Surround means that you are quite literally surrounded. And let me show you some images that will help you guys out here. Okay. So, again, surround, while more sophisticated and, and definitely a little more fun, you're just kind of working with a big mono source, okay? But what's happened here in 2021 is that we are now privileged to be able to experience immersive sound. So literally three dimensions, not just, you know, coming from the left, the right, or the, the front, or the back, but up and down. So, so we get height in addition to the, the surround concept. So after surround, 
Dolby Atmos is here now, and it's here to stay. I really believe it after doing, again, a week worth of research. If I'm going to get into anything, I, I need to spend time with it. I'm willing to sacrifice, you know, other things to to figure out, is this really going to 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 be here? And do I really need to learn it? You know, what's it all about? So the, the, the bridge that allows Dolby Atmos to be adopted by the masses, I'm talking millions and millions and billions of people, is binaural audio, which has, which has been around for some time. But they figured out how to essentially use Dolby Atmos, the technology of binaural rendering, and the playback ability of spatial audio. And here we are, we're able to do this right now today. So it's really magical. Uh, I'm excited to, to, to be talking to you about it. And again, I'm, I'm talking to you more like, like, a, like we're discovering it together. If you have questions, you know, please. Just, just shoot them out there. So, surround sound. This is what it looks like. This is what, what it feels like. If you've ever been to a theater or something, you know the experience. You're just surrounded by speakers. It doesn't necessarily feel like it's coming from any higher or lower place, but, but certainly you are surrounded by sound. Okay. And then at some point, we kind of started you know, going a little bit deeper. That gave, obviously, a little bit more depth and life to to the theatrical experience or if you had like a you know a nice system at home but here is where the rubber meets the road because we're no longer in this world of 2d or, or being surrounded by just a bunch of sounds now we have immersive sound and there's a there's so many contingencies and i'll, I'll do my best to cover it but it, it's it's quite a lot for example where am i playing this from you know which service or, or media service like itunes or or title what technology are they using for for playback and so there's a lot of little things and so we're going to try and simplify this to the best of our ability so okay these up here they use you know five speakers seven speakers there's no height okay and then down here on the right hand side and these these uh, illustrations are all by edgar author mitch we now have the ability to to position sounds and to listen to them in that 3D space, right? And, and, and what's wild, back here, I could, like, let's say we have a, a percussion, okay, like a tambourine. If I wanted to move it, I could only move it to, like, let's say the, the left or the right middle, right there on the right-hand side, RM, or, or the right side, right? Like, I could position it on a speaker, but by means of Dolby Atmos, we have 128 channels or, or positions to play sound. Now, I'm not sure if you're understanding the, the, the seismic shift that's occurring here. So some benefits, it's gonna be a lot easier to mix. The learning curve will be a little tougher because it's brand new, this, this just got started. So we're gonna get confused, we're gonna make some mistakes. But once you actually start mixing, you're not gonna try and fit 50 tracks into two channels. You're gonna have the ability and, and the flexibility to 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 move and, and not be concerned about like compression levels and you know the dynamics are have like increased you know tenfold twentyfold thirtyfold so this is going to be really interesting to, to see all the plugins that are going to be created in the next couple years and to to watch mixing methodologies because there is no right or wrong uh, at this time there are some really good tips though so okay to before we get into specifics just 100%, I want to be clear about this. Dolby Atmos and, and spatial audio are two different things. So Dolby Atmos is one format, just like surround is a format. And then we have spatial audio, which is a playback function. So two separate technologies. Atmos is a surround sound format, and it can be used convincingly with spatial audio in order to produce, right? Because it's an illusion. We're not really localizing 128 spaces i mean i mean we have headphones on this is how we're, you and i are going to be using this unless you upgrade to like a crazy studio with 128 speakers which most people are not then then we're going to take advantage of the the bridge which is binaural audio let's get into like what's going to confuse most people because i'm mostly interested in the do nots to be honest the things that are that could go wrong so in surround again we're mixing to a certain speaker but what's different here is that we're localizing a sound so going back to that tambourine, I can quite literally pick exactly where I want it positioned in a 3D field. So like you see this, this lady here, she can place it behind her head, you know, right side, top her head, 
And it really is so convincing. I mean, it sounds like it is right on top of you if you haven't heard this yet. And all you need is a pair of headphones. You don't need anything special. You don't need to buy the AirPods Pro. You don't need to buy the... If, if you want those, the, the benefit that you get with that is two things. You can play back in uh, on Apple Music, rather, or you get this technology called uh, head tracking. So head tracking is done by means of these these gyroscopes inside the speakers. But basically, if I, like, let's say the snare is coming from the left, okay? So, so if you could touch your, your left uh, ear. And then if I move and I turn my chair to the left direction, the snare is no longer in my left ear. The snare is in front of me. And then if I continue moving, I'm going to spin here. The snare will now be on my right ear. Does that make sense? So, wow. Yeah, that's so, crazy. Yeah, so that that is called head tracking. And that's the only reason you would purchase something like that because you're you're interested in the virtual reality of audio experience if that may not necessary but super cool i mean the the airpods pro max are are severely overpriced but you know if you want your toys and you want to have fun there it is right there but all you need is a simple pair of headphones and you can experience immersive sound okay so let's go over just some some specifics here atop this this illustration by edgar rother mitch these are the, the 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 typical surround sound 5.1 setup and again let's say i have guitars and i'm mixing i could position the guitars just on the left speaker or just in the center or i could like you know kind of spread them across the left side and the left i could have the left guitar on those two speakers and i can have the right guitar on the right and the right side okay so that's that's kind of the 5.1 way of looking at things we have these these positions where we can place sound okay this is called channel based mixing just like stereo right we have two channels well in surround we have five channels and the point one is for the subwoofer if you have one and so this is easy to understand i understand that in stereo we have two channels and we position left and right i can use a balancer or a true panner right in in surround sound even if you haven't experienced it you can understand the subject of being able to move something either to one speaker or to spread it across two spread it across three spread it across four or all five speakers in this case okay so understand that concept because it's about to get a little more uh, interesting here in dolby atmos that is thrown out the window we can now take what they call an object based track i'll explain more in a bit and you not only have the X plane or the Y plane, but you have a Z plane. So front to back, up and down and left and right. So you're literally in a space. You can, you can automate this as well. So if you have a nice like riser and you want it to go around you, sky's the limit. Lots of little cool things are happening here. Okay, so you guys understand stereo, surround sound, Dolby Atmos is what we're working with. The, the renderer is inside of Logic Pro. I'll teach you how to set it up, but here it is. This is the, the whole point of being here. If you understand this right here, you can start having fun with it. The, the main thing to, to really digest, if you wanna start using this and using it correctly, is that you have mix objects, okay? And music beds. And there's a lot of interchangeable terms here, so I'm sorry that, that people are gonna ruin this for you a little bit. But objects or beds, that, that's all you have to kind of think about. Like, if I want to start going into this world, there, there's just two formats I need to think about, okay? All right, so, so let's talk about the difference. Objects are the items that you'll be moving in 3D space. So anything that needs more attention, that you need to automate, that you need to, you know, be more specific with. Think vocals, think guitars, leads, you know, arpeggios, things like that. Things that require a little bit more attention. The beds, on the other hand, aka surround destinations, are like the surround sound concept I was just teaching you. I can position, let's say, a pad between the left speaker and the left side speaker. So there are two technologies occurring at the same time. Music beds, which is the surround sound format, and mix objects, which is this new technology. Again, 128 tracks at our disposal, or channels at our disposal, sorry. And then the, uh, a couple side notes, the first 10 channels are reserved for music beds. And I'll, I'll give you an illustration here in a second. So some of the terminology for bed tracks, you're gonna hear the words or the phrases surround tracks, surround bed, audio bed. It is absolutely mortifying 
how people are butchering the language. Number two, for, for object tracks, you're going to hear object base tracks, object tracks, objects, things like that. So just be clear on which one are they talking about? Are they talking the, the format where I localize the space and I, I position it exactly where I want to? Or the, uh, the, the music beds where I position them in a destination, in a surround destination? Let's say the center speaker, the right speaker on the right side. That's where I'm going to have like, um, I don't know, let me think, like maybe like some, some like big synths, you know, playing staccato notes or something like that. And then I'll have the orchestra playing on the center speaker, the left speaker on the left side. So two things to understand. On the left hand side, we have the surround panner. Again, this is, this is the idea of a bed track. And you can position the sound on the left speaker, the left right speaker, and the center, or it could just be on one speaker, what have you. So that's the surround panner. And uh, something to keep in mind with surround panners, they work best with low frequency content. So if you have anything that has bass and you want it to reach what's called the LFE, or again, the sub, then you're gonna need to use it. So it's just one thing to check off is, does it have a low end that I wanna utilize? Use the surround panner. And you know, lead elements are arpeggios that need to dance, pads that you wanna position maybe in the back somewhere, that's when you would use the, the 3D object panner on the right hand side. So to make this really easy, a surround panner is for bed tracks and the 3D object panner is for objects, hence the name. So you can see that with the 3D object panner, I have that front axis, back, left, right, and then top to bottom. All right, let's look at one more thing. So, this is how this is going to kind of be routed inside the DAW. You got all the bed tracks being routed to the first 10 channels, as I said. Uh, and I'm going to give you a, doc, a page here where you can learn the terminology. But left, right, center, the LFE, the left speak, you know, all that stuff. But the objects, uh, you could see the, you know, the bottom portion here, the object tracks are not being sent through the surround panel. They're being sent directly to the 3D object panel, which is basically burning metadata into the Dolby Atmos renderer. So these are two different processes going on at the same time. And again, there's, there's a bunch of stuff to talk about in terms of how do I master these things. All I'm going to say about mastering is that you want your tracks to be at negative 18 LUFS. Um, that's, that's what Dolby recommends. But I do need to show you this, this one thing. Here you go. This, this is going to help if you guys want to get into it. Here's basically all the language that you need to understand when it comes to the world of surround or bed tracks and how I position sounds. So if you want to take a screenshot of that, that'd be a good idea. To set this up, you basically want to go into, well, there's a couple ways. In the project new chooser, when you first start up a session, you can you know access it there. But you can also go into the project settings under audio and then just turn on, uh, you can see it says spatial audio. That's kind of how you set it up. Please save a project alternative because if you don't, it's going to mess up your session. You can't go back. There's no way of, of, of retrograding. Like once you set it up, you're basically there and it, it's an absolute nightmare to try and get, get your song back to, to the. So yeah, after that, what you're going to find is that the Adobe Atmos render is going to be on the master channel. The stereo output is gone. Why is the stereo output gone? Because there's, we're not working in stereo anymore. We're working in in surround and then you know the last thing is the most important thing is right here where it says monitoring format you have to set that to binaural because if you don't set that to binaural then essentially you're not gonna you're not gonna be able to hear this again get your pair of headphones set this thing up monitoring format is going to be set to binaural you know so we can access the bridge that i've been talking about and then look at the right hand side before we close here Remember I told you the first 10 channels are reserved for the beds? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So those that, that's the whole surround concept. And then right below that, it says 3D objects. I only have one track in this example, but you know, you can go ahead and set that up. So it says in the bottom, input object channels, two of 118. I told you that we have 128 channels, so you can you can add up all the math there. But that's that's pretty much it. That's a good introduction. That'll kind of get you going at the very least. Any questions?